my dear viewers today i am going to discuss on a very important disease in dog the disease is diabetes it is a metabolic disease the incidence of diabetes in dog comparatively rare and this is also known as deficiency of insulin or sometimes we call it as sugar diabetes <clears throat> this type of diabetes is observed in dogs not in a regular manner but occasionally we do get some cases having blood sugar it is a complex metabolic disorder caused by multi variable factors which is characterized by insulin deficiency or impaired insulin action or sensitivity result a disease which was discovered by benting in 1923 and he got the nobel prize also for this disease let me discuss some, something about the diabetes in general in man diabetes is very very rampant and it has assumed an epidemic proportions in the last month of 14th the day was discovered day was described as diabetic day and lot of arousal programs were were made but in our dog we do not get in such proportions and therefore many very people used to know about diabetes in dog in man there are two types of diabetes one is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus in short we call iddm or type 1 diabetes and another is non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus we call it as niddm or this is also known as type 2 diabetes in dogs almost always occurs iddm that means in dog insulin dependent diabetes mellitus is the main non insulin dependent is not there but insulin dependent diabetes mellitus is the picture in case of dog as a result of deficiency of diabetes where beta cells of pancreas is damaged we know there are three type of i three type of cells are being produced organelles are being produced one is alpha cells one is beta cells other is gamma cells alpha cells helps in the production of glucagon which raises the blood glucose level and insulin is secreted from the beta cells produced from the beta cells of islets of langerhans and the beta cells actually produce insulin if some or other in this beta cells are damaged or beta cells are not responding to that extent in that cases there may be deficiency of insulin resulting to diabetes another is insulin resistant diabetes pancreas produce insulin pancreas is producing insulin but dog is unable to utilize insulin as it should be that means insulin is being produced but cells are not in a position to respond to the message of the insulin so glucose is not pulled out of the blood so the cells die out of glucose hunger right actually the insulin helps in the peripheral utilization of glucose right so in a diabetic patient there are lot of blood, lot of sugar in the blood but the cells are dying of sugar why because there is no penetration 
in, of sugar in the cells. And the pancreas, uh, that means insulin, helps in the penetration of glucose in the cells. That's why we call peripheral, peripheral utilization of sugar. And that is only possible when insulin is there in the blood. And it is mostly seen in older and obese dogs used to suffer from this problem. Now, we can classify the diabetes as maturity onset diabetes. And this maturity onset diabetes is very, very common in dogs. Then there may be juvenile onset, onset diabetes, which occurs in pups, three to five months of age. Of course, it's very, very seldom occur. But maturity onset diabetes is very, very common in dogs. Sometimes some genetical predisposition is there, just like human being, right? So genetically, it may be transmitted from the one spring to other offspring. Right? That is also possible. There is some medical predisposition is there in diabetes. But I tell you, sometimes if you take some drugs like cephalexin, endofloxacin, etc., has been given for a long period of time due to some infection on others, in that case also blood sugar may rise. And this type of diabetes we'll call false diabetes. This is not diabetes. It is the hydrogenic effect of the drug, right? Because the drug actually produces some elevate the blood glucose level. So this we will not be going to consider. <coughs> now if you consider about the signs of diabetes mellitus in dog, signs generally we think of 3P, 3P syndrome, 1P is polyuria, means frequent urination. One is polydipsia, that means excessive thirst. And other is polypepsia, polydipsia, and other is polyphagia, means increased hunger. That means the animal will go on eating. It will eat more, it will urinate more, and it will drink more water. And we call P, P and P, that means polyuria, polydyspepsia, polydipsia, and polyphagia. Besides, there will be weight loss, sudden bilateral cataract formation. Actually, in our practice, we generally, or most of the veterinarians, we do not give much cognition about diabetes. But when you see some cataract, cataract in the eye, then we, th we think, we immediately think that it may be due to blood sugar, immediately we go for examination and find that there is elevation of blood glucose level. In this way, diagnosis is made. And the urine may be viscid urine with sweet odor, and it may attract the ants. Nacetone-like breath is observed in later stage of the disease. We call diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a very, very uh, fulminating stage, later stage of the disease. If you want to diagnose such case, then one has to go for blood, fasting blood glucose. And this is known as gold standard in diagnosis. Fasting blood glucose is a gold standard in diagnosis. Fasting blood glucose, if it is more than 140 mg per dl, is indicative. But sometimes it may range from 300 to 600 mg per dl. So fasting glucose level is very important. Or we can go for PP also, postprandial glucose level, that can also. But here we call glucose in to intolerance test that we can do. We can give some injection of glucose and then see the carb. That is also possible. But other tests which are required to be done in case of diabetic patients, they are the CBC, 
means complete blood count, pancreatic function test, LFT, liver function test, KFT, kidney function test, lipid profiles, astro of insulin, glucagon, and cortisone level. One thing I tell you, that cortisone, if you go on giving for a long period of time, that this cortisol also may elevate the blood glucose level, right? Glucocorticoid may also increase the blood glucose level, but it is not diabetes, right? Diabetes is solely and absolutely dependent on insulin, which is secreted from the beta cells of pancreas, beta cells of pancreas, beta cells of beta cells of Langerhans of pancreas, right? So and glucagon is produced from alpha cells. So alpha cells, glucagon elevate the blood glucose level and insulin actually depress the blood glucose level, reduce the blood glucose levels. In this way, the balance is being maintained, right? But when the animals suffer from diabetes, so it's just like human being, there are some complications or that there are some other diseases, other, other complications, which may also produce diabetes. As for example, if a dog suffer, which suffer from pyometra or endometritis complex, pyometra, endometritis complex for a long period of time, and if you examine the blood sugar level of such dog, such beach, you'll find there is elevated blood glucose level. But it does not mean that it is diabetic, but it has elevated due to the affections of the uterus, right? S similar way, there is Cushing syndrome, right? Where the cortisol level goes up, it's a skin disease. C cortisol level goes up, so in that case also, you can get more glucose, right? And there is diabetes insipidus. Why I'm telling diabetes insipidus? Because there is polyuria. <coughs> polyuria you get in case of diabetes mellitus, diabetes in Sibitas also you can get polyuria, right? But diabetes mellitus here, insulin is due to beta cells damage. That means less production of insulin or no production of insulin. That is due to diabetes. But in case of diabetes in Sibitas, there is no question of insulin. Here, it is the anti diabetic hormone which is located in the posterior part of the pituitary where from ADS is not be anti diabetic hormone is not there and therefore the urine is misvided, right? Frequent urination due to the inefficiency of the anti diuretic hormone. So here yeah, the treatment will be different. And at the same time, if you examine the urine, you'll find that the diabetes insipidus level, in case of urine of the diabetes insipidus, their specific cavity will be very, very less. Whereas in case of diabetes mellitus, specific cavity of the urine will be more which may produce a diabetes mellitus, that is chronic interstitial nephritis. In case of chronic interstitial nephritis, there is polyuria. So you get polyuria there also, but this is due to kidney. Here if you examine the urine under the microscope, you will get the uh, cells of kidney, right? Polyuria cells of the kidney cells will be there. And it is not at all uh, related to your insulin or pancreas. So diabetes insipidus and chronic interstitial nephritis. These three, one is diabetes insipidus, one is chronic interstitial nephritis, one is diabetes mellitus. In these three problems, we get glycosuria. That means glucose in the urine or polyuria, right? And complications you know, diabetes for a long period of time may create certain poor complications and some of the complications are so bad that that cannot be reversed also and very difficult to treat and that is, is known as ketoacidosis and finally there may be coma in that case and there may be unusual stress in case of your diabetes mellitus as a complications there may be vaginitis Bulbitis due to fungal infection, and sometimes diabetic patient may have cardiac problem. That means cardiac or cardiomyopathy. And if there is a wound in the body, 
so there is a less tendency of wound healing. In case of human being, so mostly we would get in the legs there may be an injury, and if the injury is too much, gangrene may, gangrene may occur, and in that case sometimes amputation of the foot, or amputation of the leg, or some part of the leg is necessary. So that's why we call um, diabetic foot in case of human being, right? In dog we do not get such things, but wound healing is also retarded that we get in case of our dog population. Then obstinate dermatitis and gangrene, already I have told you. And there will be some change in the eye, that means oculopathy, retinopathy, keratitis, cataract, all these problems of the eye we can get in dog just like human being. Then there is neuropathy, that means peripheral nerves degeneration that is there in case of diabetes. So there is weakness, a movement. Right, animal is unable to move in such a way, steadily, because there is neuropathy. In case of human being also, there is neuropathy as a consequence to diabetes. And there will be hepatopathy, means liver may be laden with fat, so hepatic lepidosis. Sometimes liver may be enlarged, we call hepatomegaly. So this is all about a background of diabetes mellitus in dog. Again, I'm telling you, the incidence is comparatively less, right? Not like human being, as it is coming in epidemic promotion. Here in dog, we do not get that much, because our dogs are running. They move, exercise. Exercise is one of the very important components of management. But here, in case of human beings, sometimes they live sedentary life, right? They are not giving that much of exercise, they are not putting, uh, laboring hard. But in case of dogs, they are running animals. Right? They are running animals, therefore the incidence was very, very less. If you look at the street dog, the incidence is very less. Because they are always running and moving. But if the dog is chained for a long period of time, in that cases, it may be obese and it may suffer from diabetes. So, if the dog is confined and not given enough exercise, in that cases, we are likely, likely to observe a diabetes, right? Not only diabetes, even the heart disease and others. So, if we go for the management, in management, we'll have to regulate the diet, right? In the diet, there must be low carbohydrate and low fat, right? So, carbohydrate should be less and fat also should also be less. Carbohydrate, because from carbohydrate starts, starts to glucose, and blood glucose level will go high, and therefore it has to be regulated. Then we should not allow the animal to starve, because diabetic hypoglycemia, right? If there is hypoglycemia, starve and hypoglycemia, if the glucose is less and it goes down, in that case there will be shock and the animal may die. Just like human being, there is diabetic coma due to less hypoglycemia and diabetic coma. And nowadays, fortunately, various commercial companies are actually delivering many diabetic diet, and that is this diabetic diet we can utilize as per the body weight or as per the instructions of the company, right? We can use diabetic diet, and we can somehow or others we can address the issue. So, in a diabetic patient, if you want to treat a diabetic patient, we have to go for insulin. One thing I want to stress upon the viewer that oral hypoglycemic agent will not do in case of dog, right? It is not like human being. Here, in IDDM patient, it is insulin-dependent diabetic mellitus occurs in dog, and therefore you have to give insulin. There is no other way. There is no other option excepting insulin. Insulin is the only answer, and therefore one has to go for insulin injection. So initially we give half unit per kg body weight, and gradually we may increase it to two units per kg body weight, or we can adjust according to blood glucose level, right? We can commensurate, or we adjust the 
insulin level according to blood, blood glucose component by evaluations of the glucose level. So most important thing is this, when you get a case of diabetes in dog, one should have to monitor the blood glucose level at periodical interval. That means periodical monitoring of blood glucose is mandatory in case of diabetes in dog. So my suggestion would be that we should, when the animal has juvenile means it, let, us, let us take the age 5 or onward, in that cases we must check the blood glucose level to see that whether my dog is suffering from diabetes, well it has or not. Thank you. Hope you are liking our video today. If yes, like, share and comment. Also subscribe our channel. We will be coming soon with a new interesting video very soon.